Hi, I'm Charlie Black. Uh, I've been working with Geode since it was not Geode, uh, Gemfire from uh, 2004, 2006 timeframe. I think it went uh, in production 2006. So um, let's go on and see what we're going to be talking about today. Definitely going to be talking about um, virtualization, right? How do we do this on not only on your vSphere environments, but on your cloud environments, you know, GCP, AWS, and, and Azure. And, and through this, we're going to cover some technical stuff about your CPU, your disk, memory, all that kind of stuff that you want to go through on your virtualization and what you would normally think about from a physical perspective. And then we're going to talk about some other things, you know, that to, to watch out for. Okay. And then later on, if you see me walking around, ask me a question. I, I, I don't mind, right? That, that's, I'm here to interact with the community, and this is the community. All right, so let's get on to uh, CPU. So back in the day, there was this company called VMware, and they would consolidate your workloads, right, to, to the machines. And it was really good, right? And then CPUs got bigger, and we would get denser con consolidation, and you would just get all these workloads working on one machine. It was really awesome. And then the reality set in. We have lots of workloads going on on that single machine. So it's, you can't even, like, be scheduled properly. So we have overcommitted CPU, we have overcommitted RAM, we have overcommitted disk, right? We're swapping all those, all those VMs out to disk. And then think about your network. All those VMs want to go out and use all that all the time. So that's where we're at, right? So whenever I see a, a geode uh, system that's not working right, I kind of look at, at these, uh, these performance indicators on, uh, that we're seeing up here, right? CPU, network, disk, those are typically where I go and look at all the time. So what, is it, what do I mean by CPU, right? Um, on the top, I'm not overcommitted on my database, right? And this can go, go for any other product out there. So I'm, I'm going to talk about Geode, but it could be any database that's running on a, on a virtualized infrastructure. I want to get to a point where there's like no overcommit on that CPU queue, right? Data request gets in there. It's not sitting behind a bunch of applications or other threads or other requests for that CPU. And you're like, how long is that going to take? I was at a couple of customer sites where that CPU queue was like 500 milliseconds. So half of a second, my data request was sitting there in that queue most of the time. So they're like, why is Gemfire so, uh, Geode so slow? Well they were way overcommitted, right? They were that system with a bunch of VMs sitting on a single physical, right? In fact, they had the backup master for their whole enterprise sitting on that same VM. All right. So how do we monitor for that? So that's one of the things that you should be doing is monitoring for that aspect, right? How am I overcommitted on that CPU? So you look at something called Steal time, if you can only get at the um, guest OS. Or if you're in an uh, environment where they like to turn off physical hardware monitoring, this would be like banking and other areas where they don't want, to, want you to look at um, hardware specs. You have to look at the VMware stats called ready time. They both look at the same exact kind of measurement of saying how long was that VM sitting in that queue waiting to get run, right? So those are two good things. The steal time works on all the cloud providers that I've tested out. Um, and, and steal time just as long as they have it on in the virtualization one. So start with steal time. If it's always at zero, then you kind of have to go off and say, what is my ready time, just to double check. All right, recommended cores per uh, data node, right? So uh, I just took this from the um, Geode Wiki, right? Uh, so what, how many cores should I have on my deployed system? Two to four for just you know doing your development. Go to six to eight for any performance or any any anything that's out there. Of course, monitoring is going to be your key thing. That's saying where to, where should you be at? I put all that gobbledygook at the bottom because. I was like, all right, how does the garbage collector default do it? So that's just default if you ever need the, 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 the um, 
the information on how to do that, how it calculated how many parallel GC threads that you have. That's important from the idea that your JVM itself, if you are sizing for four cores, it's gonna have four cores dedicated to the garbage collector. So where's your database gonna, you know, where's Geode gonna be able to send, do requests, give responses back? So you might wanna just think about tuning that as well if you go down to four or less, because the default will end up being, looking like four is the minimum. Okay, so how to design it for guaranteed no CPU overcommit? Well, uh, the best way of doing it is just mapping one physical to one virtual, right? So if I have a, that, that's an easy thing to do, right? Just one virtual to one physical. And then I wanna reserve one core for the ESX. So VMware has to do its job. In the public clouds, well, you don't get this much flexibility, but you just kind of get what you pay for, so it's easier from that aspect. Um, so like, how do I do it on the, on the clouds? So um, you just pay for it, right? <laughs> so GCP, it's called sole tenant. Uh, AWS, it's called dedicated instances. And Azure, that one, this one was kind of interesting. You have to look at the naming convention of, of their VMs and you have to find that I in there. And that just says, hey, it's a reserved instance or something like that. I forget what the actual real word was. But that's how you do it. And then if you get a machine that is, say, 128 gigs, you just divide it up on the, you know, how many geode instances you want to fit in there. That at least gets you the guaranteed no overcommit on CPU, which is awesome for any data application on, on virtualized infrastructure. OK. So how do we think about it from a memory perspective? Um, I think it was Grace Hopper, right? She, she had this like cool uh, thing where she talks about the speed of light, right? Physics comes into play. So when you're swapping from memory into disk, right, that whole swapping, uh, writing over to, to disk, well, those numbers can be translated into real measurement, right? So I can measure real things in the real world. Real world. And if I think about memory, well, I can, in a, that, uh, 5,000 nanoseconds, I can walk almost 20 minutes. It's about a mile, right? So I walk it about 20 minutes. The SSD, well, it's about five hours, right? So you just kind of go and say, memory is, not, memory is not disk, so please do not swap, right? If you're using an in-memory data system and you're swapping, well, at least try to have architected it that way, so that way you are swapping because you wanted to swap, but don't do it on purpose, right? So just make sure you're sizing it properly and then life will be good, right? Disk is not CPU, I mean, disk is not memory. All right, um, one thing I, I did say, if you are gonna carve it up, there is a concept called NUMA nodes. And all that means is a CPU has some memory attached to it, right? So there is a CPU one or two, whatever it is that box would have, and you just have to look it up in your your Dell charts or your HP charts and say, all right, well, how many CPUs do I have? And you just make sure that you fit your geode instances inside that new node. So like if you're in that Azure case where you're dedicating a physical to geode and you want to divide it up, just make sure you're at least paying attention to that new node. If you do span it, I've, there are numbers out there that say what is the performance hit? Basically, one CPU has to go over and ask the other CPU for that memory and bring it back. So it is almost like doing a network round trip, but it's not as bad. So it's not gonna kill you. I don't know what the actual percentage is. It depends on the application, but it's gonna be significant enough that it's monitorable. So span, don't, CPUs, launch two instances, you'll be good, right? Does this have a pointer? All right, so thinking about disk. One thing about Geode is it's a scaled, uh, shared nothing architecture, right? So the idea is if I'm not getting enough throughput with three nodes, two nodes, whatever it is, I just add another until I can handle that scale, until I can start storing enough information out there. If we start thinking about disk from this aspect, um, 
All right. The, 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 I wanted to throw in there also think about network because I'm going to talk about this next slide. So let me talk about this next slide, and then maybe we'll go back to that network side. So what's the shortest pass to, to that disk, right? So this is me saying, don't do NAS, right? So we have a shared nothing architecture where I can put up more instances of, uh, up out there to scale out to hit my throughput goals. If I'm writing all to a centralized storage, does it make sense? Probably not. Um, now I can get into some little bit of arguments on, you know, is it SAN good enough? Be comparing it to a directly attached storage. Um, SAN, just as long as you have enough LUNs to get through, then it's sort of the right capacity to handle it. But a lot of times you're, that gets kind of complicated if you start talking about big grids, right? And sometimes they talk to customers that are at 200, 400 geode instances, right, per single grid. And mapping that to a LUN and a direct attached, I mean, that, um, a SAN can get quite, quite um, interesting to configure, right? So sometimes you just say direct attached storage. It's easy what you get from the cloud provider as well. All right. And then also think about all those VMs that we had out there. Don't forget that's still going to be existing out there in your architecture. They're all using that SAN or that NAS, right? They're all writing logs to it. Those disks have to do something. Yes, they have really awesome I.O. controllers, but eventually they might not be uh, hitting your throughput goals that you need. Okay. Network. Um, Network's almost my best friend, right? It's like, that's what Geode's kind of like built on top of. And if we go back to a couple slides, let's, let's, let's go back a couple slides, because that was a good little stat, right? So like thinking about that round trip in a data center, that's equivalent to like walking for a day, day or so. So we might want to do as much as possible to not hit that network. So let's go back to my network friends and thinking about the NAS and how much that overhead there would be. All right. So on network. All right, so some of the things that just, I call it an optimization. So these are not must-dos, but something that'll give you a little bit better optimization on, on what's going on there. VMware itself is tuned it for um, throughput, right? So they are gonna be coalescing events. So the physical network card is coalescing events. The virtual layer is coalescing events. Um, so they're basically using all the network, uh, making a packet bigger, so that way it's nice big packets. But if you think about it from a database request perspective, I made a request. I'm looking for that answer as quickly as possible. So I want to turn off all that coalescing. So that's one of the things that we want to think about. Is it worthwhile going through your governance uh, to follow what City was talking about earlier? Do we have it set up a governance model where you have to go look through that? Sometimes it's not worth having that battle. Sometimes it is. It all depends on what your application is doing. If you need that extreme throughput or that low latency response time, these are definitely some things that will help you get there. And more. All right, so, um, so this is the vMotion. Um, what is vMotion? So let me talk about what is vMotion. vMotion is a feature with inside of VMware that allows VMs to basically move around in your data center. Really awesome stuff. However, Geode itself offers high availability, right? VMware made vMotion for high availability. Geode itself has high availability. So which is the right answer? Well, I'm a Geode speaker, so I'm gonna say Geode's the right answer. What should we do? We should maybe turn those instances off, or remotion off, and just throw away those instances. If we need to move a physical box or a VM off of a physical, just throw it away. Start up another one somewhere else, and the data will migrate. That's kind of uh, my kind of feeling there. Now, we all have to work together as a team. <laughs> so you're, you're, you might want to say, all right, what else could I do? Right? So I'll work with my teams and say, all right, you want vMotion on? Can we at least set it to manual? And what manual allow me to do is say, from an application perspective, I can slow down my traffic. 
because what will happen is as VMware uh, is trying to vMotion that machine, it's stunning my VMs and making them slower so that way it can make the copy of my memory to another machine. And don't forget we're talking about we're doing memory storage, so these are 32 gigs, 90 gig VMs, and how long does it take you to shuffle that across the network? Maybe seconds, right? For an application for me hitting my web, you know, my cell phone, that might, I, I don't want to wait seconds, right, for that. So we just might want to say, we'll do it in off cycle, do the vMotion because it's kind of cool, right? And, but we'll just make it manual. Uh, the other one on this one is vMotion motion of disk. I forget the actual term for that. Hopefully I wrote it up there. But they can also do it from the disks. Um, this, this is where it comes down to a vocabulary, right? A semantics issue. Um, when the VMware team will say this or your storage team will say, we instantaneously pause those disks. You know what the instantaneously actually is? It's minutes. 15 minutes to them is an instantaneous uh, motion, motion. Imagine if they paused you for 15 minutes. Um, I think there's failure detection in geode that's measured in seconds. So basically, that's an instantaneous failure. <laughs> so you might want to talk to your teams about, hey, uh, let's turn off all of the, the vMotion stuff. I know it's really awesome. Geode's got HA in it. Let's just trust in that. Just throw away my VMs if you don't need it. Of course, don't throw them all away. I'm going to talk about the data safety in a, sec, in a moment. All right, so we get the idea there. Let's go on to the next one. So public clouds, um, like I said, you get what you pay for. Uh, some things to watch out for over there. Definitely monitor your noisy neighbor, right? Are you on the machine where Netflix is uh, codecing the next release of the major Marvel blockbuster? Yeah, you're going to be on that machine, right? And it's not going to be nice. So make sure that you're monitoring or go with those reserved instances. The other one is the disk, disk IOPS and network throughput. So if you go cheap, you get cheap. If you go expensive, you get really nice stuff, right? So like if uh, you have to go with the, I forget, uh, Amazon, it's like the 8XL or higher to get the decent networking. Once you're below that, you're on a rate limited networking speed. So what that just turns into is that, uh, that one day hike that I, was, that I showed you up there for the network round trip, that just means it turns into a two day hike. Do we want that? Probably not. All right, so data safety. Um, all right, so now we talked about all this kind of cool virtualization. Imagine that that VM team just migrated you all to one physical host, right? That'd be like the worst thing ever. So that physical host then just pops, and there goes my three node cluster, four node cluster, because I had a big enough system. We also have to talk about data safety there. Uh, VMware terms, they call it anti-affinity. So what I would like to do for, a, a, we'll say I have a four node geode cluster. Have all these on separate physical nodes, or at least two, right, divided in half. Um, that, or actually we'll just go with the idea that it's four physicals, makes, makes it e our life easier. Um, so now with that is if I fail, the physical machine fails, I at least ha are, don't have everything co-located on that same host. It does happen in, in virtual infrastructure. That's also why the dedicated instances are not, not too bright, are, are nice. Um, because now I can separate the concerns and make sure my data is safe. If we don't care about the data, you can do whatever you want, but a lot of times people care about their data. When you go into the dedicated, um, um, dedicated when you want to set this up for data safety, we have a concept called placement or um, Enforce unique hosts, right? And this just spreads the data out there. So if you want to look at how to do this with Geode, so once we get all those physicals out there, we set up some little properties so that way Enforce unique hosts looks at the IP address and make sure the redundant copies aren't on that box. So when we're setting it up and we were launching more than one VM per physical because we have this really large dedicated instance, uh, that's a property to go look at. Another one that's really good to set up is a redundancy zone. 
So let's just say I have uh, a, two racks, three racks. Redundancy zones means I'm going to spread my data across this. So the backups copies are on one redundancy zone. To you know, redundancy zone A has a primary copy, then the, my backup copies are on the other redundancy zones. So that way, if that whole rack goes down because I accidentally stumbled into it, my data is safe, right? Uh, just a further note on this, uh, in our PC, my PCF brethren really likes the idea of putting availability zones in uh, AWS interregency uh, concepts, right? So meaning they map our availability zones to regions in AWS. Well, let's take a look at our, what our ping times are or interregency latency on there. It's not that bad. But like if we divide 45 into 1,000, that's how many operations per second I can do on, on that network. Normally, I would say, let's do that asynchronously, use a WAN. You'll get way better throughput. Um, and then you'll still be safe with the, with the WAN capability. You can go look at some of the other regions there. It's a nice website that helps you out with that. I didn't find one like it for GCP or Azure, but uh, I think uh, that guy was looking at it, so cloud ping. All right, in summary, hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm not running over on time or anything like that or too short. We talked about one-to-one uh, -one virtual, one virtual, one physical. Definitely something key to do. If you walk away with anything here, that's the, that's the thing to walk away from. That's going to save you calls on the weekend. Why did my grid go down? Well, it's because I ran my backup master for my enterprise on that same host and just took up all my CPU cycles and I was in my ready queue and it was like minutes long. <clears throat> Disk. Just don't do NAS. Right, that's, if, if we could walk away from anything, just don't do NAS. Um, memory, let's, uh, let's not swap, right? Uh, OS pr parameters, you know, turn your swappiness off. ESX layer, don't do balloon mo mo uh, ballooning. Even though it's better than going to disk, it's still copying in and out of process space. And then don't balloon on your ESX as well. Network. By default, all it's tuned for throughput, not latency. So if you're trying to get a super uber low latency application, we want to make sure that we're tuning that. And then data safety. I touched on that. We want to make sure that we're protecting our data from all these virtual concerns where I can do all that cool consolidation. We want to make sure that we're protecting that data. And then also think about um, using our WAN to pr protect against that whole data center failing. It happens. All right. Any, any questions from, the, from any of this? I know it was quite technical and deep. So, If not, you can reach me out there, out in the crew. I'll be walking around. Thanks. Thanks.